Hello and welcome to the instructor's introduction for photographic diptychs and triptychs. So this is going to be a fun learning unit, or at least I hope it's fun for you guys. It's an opportunity to take a lot of the information that we've covered thus far that's been creative but also very technical and apply that to making some artwork that reflects these pretty historical concepts of a diptych and a triptych. Um, and so read this information that I've put together for you. This is a diptych that I, I put together. Um, and really it was kind of about a lot of connections and then visual similarity. So looking up at the trees, in opposite, looking down at the people, um, pretty much how, you know, the trees give us the ability to sustain ourselves on so many different levels including what these people are sitting on. So just that there's a lot of um, different symbolism for me as why I chose to put these images together. So I hope you get to go through that process when you put your images together for this learning unit. Um, so, and you know, here's more information about the diptych and a little bit about what I was suggesting, like it, it was a religious, um, like small pocket book in a way that people carried and that's where this word originally came from and this is also a diptych that I made that I'll just let you enjoy without explaining what it's about. And then the photographic triptych where now we've got three images that come together that might influence each other, reflect each other, um, and again, you can Google photographic triptych in Google Images and probably get lots of cool and maybe not so cool examples. Another short video that just talks about this concept of the triptych. And then there's a required reading. So you'll want to um, check out this link and review this article. Um, it's pretty great. It will really help you with the homework. Um, well, it, it, it will, it's the only way you could do uh, part one of this week's discussion and um, it would be really helpful for your visual process of, of thinking about what two images you want to put together and why. So for example, um, there's again a couple of different reasons why I decided to put these two images together, but if you'll notice, notice the horizon line throughout the two photos is connected these wires are connected. So, and there's a lot of personal um, connection as to why I put these two images together. So really this is an opportunity for you to learn about um, diptychs and triptychs. This is my 19 minute lecture, which is really just showing you tons of different examples to think about and consider. So I hope you enjoy that. And then I included some student examples. There's also a lot of student examples in my lecture, but different ways of um, thinking about the concepts that we've learned about, right? So minimum depth of field, we've got similar shapes. The background is thoughtful, right? These start to tell a story about childhood, health, um, you know, you eat right, you work out. There's all different ways, but then just visually it's interested how they're connected by the round spheres. Um, color can bring two images together. Just simply the lighting and the impact and the color and the composition, like all of these different things, I think you'll be able to explore with this learning unit. And um, hopefully that will be a fun process for you. You know, and something else to think about, do you wanna have this white space between your images or do you want your images almost next to each other? There's so many different ways for you to explore. I think that it's a little bit like visual poetry when you start to bring more than one image together, especially when you're just trying to be playful and have fun with this concept of pairing two photographs. These are some great videos by um, one of my favorite um, Lightroom instructors, Julian Koss, and these will be really helpful. Even if you don't use Lightroom to build your artwork, that's okay. Um, but there is some insightful information that you might enjoy. And if you're interested in learning Lightroom, you would also see her using some of the tools that are available. 
I made a short video on how to put two images together using Microsoft, and then you could download that as a PDF. Um, you can use the grid um, in the Canvas application. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that you can build a diptych. And here's another video that might be helpful by a different instructor, Paul Koss, uh, Paul Mueller. Sorry about that. Bunch of helpful links. This, the first um, discussion post will be to read and reflect on the required article. Like I said, there's a lot of great information that will be helpful. Um, and the prompts that you re should respond to, including responding to one of your classmates' posts. And then finally, the homework for this week. Um, there's a video here where I go over all of the details that you'll want to include in this week's homework. And one thing I do want to note is don't cut and paste the grid. It, 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 it does something funny when you do that. So you need to build your own grid, and there's information about that. Um, in the announcements if you forgot, or you can email me and I'll remind you. So that's the learning unit. We're going to be making diptychs and triptychs. Um, I hope you get a chance to make new photos with some intention, be playful with mixing new photos and old photos, but um, I hope this learning unit gives you the opportunity to play around with a lot of the techniques that we've been reviewing be sure to use the language that I've been trying to share with you guys when you're discussing the information that you should be responding to in the prompts. All right, well, thanks for listening, and keep me posted if you have any questions.